Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today in this video we are going to discuss a very important topic uh, which is Athari Tawheed or you can also call it Hanbali Tawheed. This topic is very important in the contemporary world uh, because post uh, uh, World War II we have seen an explosion uh, in in the popularity of Athari and Hanbali or Salafi or Wahhabi uh, modes of thinking and uh, theologies. Uh, the very first thing that we need to understand is that uh, we would see opposing claims from all these uh, specific groups, uh, the Taimians, the followers of Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, the so-called Hanbalis, uh, the Atharis, Wahhabis, Salafis, and Aflul Hadith. So these people... Uh, would claim that they have internal differences and they might even claim that there, there are specific differences in their theologies as well. Uh, but there, there is a core to uh, all of their theologies that uh, we are going to discuss and this is going to be an academic critique of uh, their worldview and how their worldview does not make uh, any sense from a semiotic and linguistic point of view as well as a philosophical point of view. So to understand uh, their theology and their worldview, we need to understand their hyper fixation uh, with affirming the literal meanings of the divine book, uh, the Holy Quran. These people say that everything in the Quran must be literally affirmed. We cannot take uh, the Quranic message, we cannot take the Quranic meaning, we cannot take any Quranic verse in a metaphorical sense, uh, in sense of majaz, in a, in a sense that does not correspond to the literal meaning. Because these people believe that the way of the Salaf uh, the earlier people, the first generation, first three generations, was to affirm the literal meaning. So, and, and since the Quran is a clear book, uh, all of its communication should be uh, in a literal uh, meaning. So, what these people are essentially doing is that they are taking any uh, metaphysical and metaphorical sense away from Quran, any depth of meaning, any any batin, any hidden meaning or any meaning that is accessible to the people of knowledge. They are taking it away from Quran and only reducing the book to a, a linguistic system that only and only accepts literal meanings. And if, if we are to see any poetic system in the world or a, any any system of uh, linguistics or uh, uh, artistic expression, let alone philosophical expression, we would see that it would be filled with me metaphorical meanings that would enhance uh, the quality of the work. So to me it and, and to m many people, it appears absolutely absurd that books written by humans can have uh, a meaning that is majaz can have a meaning that is metaphorical but uh, the book that is uh, uh, the holiest of the holy that is uh, the best book in the world uh, according to the muslim dogma it it cannot have a metaphorical meaning to me it uh, appears to be absolutely absurd and if if we are to read quran as well it also say, it says in many places, Afala taqilun, Afala yatatabbarun, like don't you think, don't you think about it, don't you feel it, don't you uh, comprehend it. It also says that, uh, uh, for example, wal fajra, wal ayarin ashra, wal shafi, wal watra, wal layli za yasra, hal fi thalika, qasamul lizi hijr. Uh, like Quran talks about various signs and then says that isn't in it uh, a sign for those who think 
then Quran also says, وَيَسُرِبُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلْنَاسِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ عَلِيمٌ That this, these examples are for people. These are mere examples which are for people. And God is the one who is absolutely knowing and, and, and wise. So, uh, and it also talks about muhkamat and mutashabihat and uh, uh, these kind of verses. For example, Quran says in uh, uh, Surah Al-Imran that هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرَ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَبَّهَ مِنْهُ اِبْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلُهُ وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب. So it is absolutely clear that uh, this verse means that there, there are verses in Quran that are muhkamat and there are verses that are mutashabihat. Muhkamat are the clear verses and the mutashabihat are are the ambiguous verses or, or the metaphysical verses which have uh, absolute metaphysical depth. So w one can read the works of uh, the Islamic philosophers that explain the categories of uh, muhkamat and the mutashabihat and that muhkamat deal with legal uh, expression and mutashabihat deal with uh, metaphysical expression and the legal expression in Quran is clear but the metaphysical ex expression is open to uh, interpretation it is open to tafsir it, it is open to metaphorical uh, analysis and uh, th th there's a great book written by uh, Ibn Rushd as well on this uh, which is called Fasl Maqal uh, which is a really a good treatise which one can under, uh, read to understand the view of the Islamic philosophers uh, in greater detail. I will uh, link it up in the description as well. But the main point that I'm trying to make here is that uh, these people, they do not understand that Quran can have a metaphorical meaning and that Quran says it in its own text that it can have metaphorical meaning that there are mutashabihat verses as well here that uh, nobody knows their interpretation uh, that apart from uh, the ulul albab So I think that these people really ignore the metaphysical depth of Quran and what these people do and I, I, I will show it to you as well that these people affirm everything in the Quran literally about God. For example, if God says that God, everything would nothing would remain uh, except for God's face they would say that God has a face if God says that uh, I created Adam with my two hands they would affirm that God has two hands if uh, their hadith starts saying that God descends upon the lowest heaven every night they would start saying that yeah God de descends upon uh, the lowest heaven every night if if their hadith says that uh, God would show his shin to people they would start saying this as well if God if if their hadith say that uh, he would put his foot in in hell they would affirm this as well uh, if God they even would say that God can go around uh, for jog jogging as well and they would affirm the literal meaning of all these words and then they go on to say oh but we do not know the modality of how it happens but the thing is that meanings are in a, a semiotic relationship 
with modalities right there there is no meaning without a modality when when you hear a word the very reason that this word is meaningful is that you have attained attached it to a modality so it is absolutely absurd from a linguistic point of view to uh, affirm the literal quote unquote literal meaning of uh, uh, something and then go on to say that oh we do not know the modality of uh, of this literal meaning and there cannot be, cannot be any conceivable modality for this meaning so now you can see how absurd the view of this this group is and and if you are to read their texts the, these people you know champion people like uh, Ibn Uthaymeen you know Ibn Taymiyyah and the Hanbali school all these people they they, they were even refuted by the uh, Ashaira or the Maturidiya who saw the flaws in this kind of reasoning and even the Ashaira and the Maturidiya who have been uh, historically the dominant Sunni group as well they have also argued against this kind of reasoning and argued for a, for a pro ta'wil approach which says that no these verses ought to be understood in a, in a metaphorical sense not in a literal sense what we say and these people love saying you know that god is unlike anything else but i would claim that these people uh, do not understand this claim they do not actually hold to negative theology actually the islamic philosophers are those who actually believe in because means that the divine essence is absolutely ineffable and unlike anything else right so it cannot be the case that the divine essence itself can be understood by something else that the divine essence is conceivable through another the conception of the divine essence is itself a real composite that cannot be a reality because that which is the real composite has mutual affinity by that which explains it right if something has parts then it, the parts of that thing are like that thing they can explain the reality of that thing right for example by understanding the reality of atoms i can understand my reality if someone knows absolutely everything about atoms uh, and and if uh, I am absolutely reducible to atoms then that person knows absolutely everything about me similarly this this proves uh, that that anything that has parts is like something else right so the only thing about which we can say that that it is unlike everything else that thing needs to be understood in its own essence it needs to be absolutely independent and if it is absolutely independent it cannot have any parts and it cannot have any real distinction in its own self right so god cannot have physical or literal hands yeah it is true that in so far that hands are a part of reality and god is the reality the basis of all reality god has the ontological content of a hand as well right because obviously a hand exists and god is the creator of all hands right so in in that sense god has the ontological content of a hand right but that does not mean in any literal sense that god has a hand or you can ascribe any kind of uh, uh temporality to god or any kind of locality to god that is absolutely absurd so i think what we need to understand here is that how idiotic the worldview of these people are and what are the logical implications of this the idiotic and nonsensical worldview and how beautiful and uh, rational and uh, in accordance to the true majesty of the Quran and the true majesty of the Islamic God is the view and the doctrine of the Islamic philosophers. If we realize this, I think Islam and the Muslim population 
can uh, really progress by understanding these rational doctrines and uh, uh, fighting and uh, doing their part against the eradication of uh, this nonsensical ideology which unfortunately has uh, overtaken our in uh, our communities and it right now is being widely accepted and these people like uh, Hamza Zortes or Muhammad Hijab, Daniel Haqiqatju uh, these people are you Ali Da'aba these people are using our arguments of the Islamic philosophers like the contingency argument and then going on and proving their athari tawheed which is not even rational at the first place so if you like this analysis please like and share inshallah i'll be will be making more videos in future so feel free to comment your thoughts and share this video ma'assalama wa ma'alayna illa al-balaghul mubeen